Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Central. If you're watching online, welcome. Why don't we get off our feet and worship? It's going to be a great morning.
God, that there's a place for each and every one of us with you. No matter what we're going through, no matter where we've come, there's a place in your house for each and every one. God, thank you. All we have to do is believe those words today.
right now for all for the words we've already sang how we are chosen and not forsaken you called us and you have a purpose for our lives and when you speak and when you say a word that peace will be still because it's your word that has authority it's your word that has the power and our part the part that we have to play with that is to believe it my part is to God, let the faith rise up. Let your faith rise up in us today that we would believe every word that you say about us. For every storm we are facing this week, for every storm that we're going through, God, you are there, you are speaking, you are walking with us through it. Oh God, whatever that may be. Thank you, God. my encouragement to you today believe the words that God is saying to you right now and he is speaking he is speaking he wants you to know something right now it could be anything it really could be anything because we are such unique people we're going through unique things and he knows everything that we're going through everything and everything so whatever he is speaking to your heart right now would you open it would you open it up and believe what he's saying to you today. I know it's a challenge for even myself when I find myself in a storm. It's circling all around me, it feels dark. All I have to do is reach out and hold his hand and that's me opening my heart and believing. And as soon as I do that, as soon as I do that, things begin to change for me. It's not that it's perfect. It's not that I have it together. It's not that the storm even goes away. It's that in that moment, there's something positive there. There's something I know I can grab onto. There's something I can hold onto, and that's God. So whatever your storm is today, would you believe the words that he's speaking to you right now? I, I can tell you one thing for sure. He loves you so much. He loves you very much. Thanks for singing. Thanks for jumping. Thanks for worshiping with us. I'm going to invite you to grab a seat as we continue. Well, hello, people. Welcome to Central again. Happy Sunday. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for singing with us. How y'all feeling this morning? Anyone feeling okay? On an amazing Sunday morning in the summer. I was just reminded that it snows in this country, and I realized that I should really enjoy these days because the snow is coming. Just so you know. Just giving truth, okay? Providing truth. Anyway, it's so good that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us, especially if this is your first time. Thanks so much for making time to be here, whether you're actually uh, on location here at Scott Street. If you're joining us online, thank you. Those of you joining us, tuning in. If it's your first time tuning in, thank you so much for making time to be with us on this Sunday. Maybe Sunday evening where you are, wherever you are in this world. Thank you so much. Um, if you are new, we do have a gift for you as Sort of an extra way of saying thanks for being with us. How you can receive that gift if you're here is in the seat back in front of you, there's a connect card. Fill out that card sometime during the experience and then head to Central Connect in the lobby after our time. It's the big blue wall. You can't miss it. Someone would love to exchange that card for a gift. Sort of personally, you know, welcome you and, um, and say thanks for coming out. And if you're joining us online for the first time, we'd love to put a gift in your hand too. So feel free to follow the prompts. Uh, to get your gift. Awesome. It, it, it's worth repeating every Sunday. You know, um, we ha have these two convictions here at Central. One is to introduce people to faith. You know, um, if you've never 
you know, sort of had any sort of faith, introduce you to what faith looks like. And then secondly, help us to all grow in our faith so that we can live the life that God has intended. And so I hope you feel that this morning um, in everything that we do together. Uh, now we're going to continue on in our time uh, by giving, and so we're going to invite the host forward to do that. Uh, if you are new, this is something that we do as a central family, as a church family, so please feel zero obligation to give. Let that place, plate just pass you by. In fact, this may be a good moment to start filling out that connect card if you want to, um, but there are a bunch of options for you to give uh, on the screen behind me. You do what works best for you. Yeah. All right, so there are three things I want to let you know about uh, this morning. Just three things to sort of keep top of mind as you're giving. Uh, the first one is about the Skit Guys. Uh, the Skit Guys are this comedic duo. They're, they're amazing. Um, and they're coming to Central in just about a month, September the 16th at 6 p.m. It's going to be a fantastic time. Now, just to let you know that... Um, that event is a ticketed event and so you need to purchase tickets in order to come uh, you can purchase tickets on our website centralcc.ca you'll see the link right on the home page um, so you make sure you purchase tickets now they're amazing I'm pretty sure it's gonna sell out so the sooner you do it the better I already I've said it now so if you go and they're sold out no one to blame but you so uh, they're gonna be they're gonna go. They're gonna go pretty quickly. So head to the website centralcc.ca. Get your ticket for the skit, guys. Um, really great. A couple of guys there. Um, another event happening in September is a Vision Sunday. Now, if you've never been here for a Vision Sunday, this is basically a Sunday where we put a lot of focus on who we are as a church, um, what we do, why we do the things that we do. And so it's, it's really a, an important Sunday for us, just sort of like, you know, almost like setting the vision for what we're going to do um, in the next year and, and, and everything that drives us. And so um, I just want to make sure I mention that. It's September the 9th. Um, maybe you come occasionally. This is a really good Sunday to make sure you're out because it's, it's, there's a really deep focus on, on, on who we are as a church. So, so just mark that on your calendars, September the 9th, Vision Sunday at Central. It's going to be good. It's going to be amazing. Um, and the last thing actually relates to Vision Sunday. So, you know, as a church, we don't do what we do without you. Uh, you as individuals help out, make, make everything that we do happen. And on Vision Sunday, we've just been thinking about ways to sort of creatively highlight that. So I'm... Um, I'm actually going to get you to help me out today. I'm going to ask you to pull out your mobile phone. Don't, don't be afraid. I pulled mine out, right? So I'm going to get you to pull it out, and I'm going to ask you um, to text this phrase, because of you, because of you, text that phrase to the number on the screen, and you'll receive a link. Just hit that link, and it's going to ask you to fill out some information. Um, really simple. First is your name. And then the second thing is, it's going to ask you to fill out information about someone in your life, someone at Central that's made a difference. And so um, it essentially goes, I want to thank, and then you have a space to insert a name, and then because of you, and you're going to put a reason. So for example, I want to thank Phil. Because of you, uh, maybe I came out to Central for the first time and have started my faith journey. Or I, I want to thank Mary. Because of you, um, you know... I was able to have a really good Sunday and you helped me out when I was feeling really down. Or, you know, I want to thank Frank. Um, because of you, I started to volunteer and, you know, I've been able to help people and it's made me, you know, it's really changed my life. So for what, whatever reason you want to fill out, we just want to give you an opportunity to highlight people who have been making a difference in your life. So all you have to do is grab your phones, take them out, and then... Because of you, just text that phrase to the number and you'll receive a link to fill in the information, whatever information you want to fill out. So, I'm actually going to give you two minutes to do this, right? I'm going to disappear off of the stage. Not magically, I'm going to walk off. But um, <laughs> I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to actually just think about it and text that phrase and then, you know, highlight someone that's made a difference in your life. And then after that, Justin's going to come up and continue on in our series called Spice. So, two minutes. Take out your phones, fill it out, and Justin will be here 
in two minutes. See y'all in a bit. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Excuse me. Great. That's awesome. So glad to have you with us. My name is Justin, and uh, I'm one of the pastors here at Central, and uh, just so glad that you're here today. And uh, whatever brought you here, uh, thank you for being here. And so uh, today we're continuing in a series we've been in entitled Spicy. Uh, but before we get into it, I wanted to just to take a quick second. And how many of you uh, have children or students that were part of Kids Camp this week? You make some noise if that's you. All right. Uh, some of you are just glad you got rid of your kids for the week. But all those of you, I, we went up Wednesday night and uh, we're just able to celebrate uh, an awesome week of just student leaders uh, pouring into our kids and our students. And it was just awesome. It was awesome to watch just, again, this, seeing this young generation just investing in people, investing in these students, reminding them who God says they are. And, and it was powerful uh, to be a part of. And so can we just give it up for our amazing uh, student volunteers? And Yeah, it's amazing. Great. Well... Like I said, uh, we've been in uh, a, few, a couple weeks already of a series we've been in called Spicy, and uh, we decided we wanted to take five weeks uh, to really talk about uh, this conversation of things that are maybe a little bit controversial. And we're not doing it for the sake of being controversial, but we wanted to talk about things that you normally don't talk about in church. And so if you haven't been with us, week one we talked about white privilege, which was great, really lighthearted topic. Pastor Johnny did a great job uh, talking about that. And then last week, we talked about what we really think about Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, and the government. And so if you want to know what we think, you can go back online, centralcc.ca. Give you a little intrigue there. Uh, and next week, uh, if you are a vegan hipster, you're going to love it, because we're talking about the environment, okay? If you lean that way, that's going to be next week. And then the last week, we're going to talk about money. And so that, that one's called Capitalist Pigs. So uh, just very lighthearted 
conversations. That's all they are. And so today, in that same spirit, we're going to talk about uh, a thing called personal pronouns. We're going to talk about uh, the LGBTQ uh, conversation. We're going to talk about sexual identity, uh, alternative lifestyles, gender dysphoria. Uh, again, and we're going we're gonna to figure it all out in 25 minutes, okay? So that's going to be our... That's going to be our goal, to navigate through this together. And, and, and I'm really excited about this topic. We, we had a powerful first experience today, and, and it was powerful because I think for every one of us, we, uh, we have people in our lives who battle this or struggle with this conversation. They don't know what to do with it. Uh, maybe even you yourself are struggling, you're battling with this conversation. You don't know how to process these things. Maybe you're joining us online, you're on Facebook, and, and you're watching, and you're like, I, I wasn't expecting to be watching this, but for some reason I am, and you're battling with this conversation. Maybe you work with someone, or you've had kids that are working through it, or they go to school with kids that are working through it. And the truth is, we have emails and people who call us literally every week, and they say, I'm just trying to figure out what do I do with this conversation? So that's why we're talking about it, because it's important. It actually really matters. And so we want to take sort of this morning and just focus on how do, you, how do you deal with this conversation? What are we talking about? So I want to give sort of a few sort of, uh, I guess, rules of engagement that we've decided to use over the course of this month as we talk about each of these topics. And so I'm just going to go through them real quick with you. First one is this. As we talk about this conversation of, of the LGBTQ um, you know, whatever, whatever, if you're part of that community or you're working through that conversation, for us, we're not trying to be controversial. We're not doing this just for the sake of it or just because we want to stir the pot or anything other than we just want to start a conversation. And the truth is today, you may hear me say things that you don't agree with, and I want to actually give you permission to do that. That's okay. Uh, I want you to actually wrestle through it. Today isn't about me telling you what to think. It's actually telling you how to. And that's sort of our next framework. I don't want to tell you what to think. I want to give you a framework on how to think about it, okay? So for some of you, it's going to frustrate you, some of the things I'm going to say, and you're going to say, why, why aren't you telling me what to think? And I, I'm just refused to do that because I want to give you a framework on how to think about this conversation because I think it's actually more helpful as you talk about it, as you process it, as you work it out with your kids and those that are around you and those that you're here with. I want to give you a framework for how to think about it. And so for us, uh, this isn't a set of rules we want to enforce, but they're principles that each individual must interpret. We want you to internalize it. We want you to begin to go, what do I believe about this topic? And then lastly, we sort of have wrapped it all up in this idea that this means for each of us that we believe that whether you struggle in this, in this area or you don't, or you know somebody that does, my hope for you is that you would recognize the incredible dignity and value of every single person. I hope you walk away with that today. I hope you open your heart to this truth that every one of us has purpose and power, no matter where we're at on our journey. And I hope you also see that every one of us has the freedom to choose. We can walk towards God, or we can walk away. And so today we're going to sort of view everything through that lens, all right? So, so today, the, in, in this conversation, the question I think a lot of people, including myself, are wondering is, what are we really talking about? There's so many things that are in this sort of melting pot, so to speak. What are we really, really talking about? And I think the word that sort of summarizes this conversation is this word called inclusion, okay? Inclusion. This is going to be the framework in which we're going to view this through. And inclusion is really made up of three things that we're going to explore today. Number one is we all want to know who's in and who's out, right? We want to know who's in, who belongs, and who doesn't belong. Second one is how do we pursue truth in this community, in this community of faith, what does it look like to pursue truth? How do we anchor ourselves? What does that look like? And then the third one, how do we treat one another? Okay? So those are going to be the three things. And I want to encourage you today, if you have a phone, just take pictures of things. If there's things that stand out to you that you want to talk about, you want to reflect on, you want to look up and see if I'm right or if you're, you're right, um, you know, if you want to process it more, I want to encourage you to, to sort of do that as we go today. All right, so the first question is who's in and who's out? Now, I want to start with, I, I love starting with psychology. A lot of times I do this, and I, I, I'm realizing that I do it because I think as I study how our brain works, it actually helps me discover how God has wired me. I don't think those things are opposing. They're actually complementary. So what's interesting is psychologists have studied this idea of, of how we interact with one another as human beings. And one of the ways that they've sort of categorized the way we interact with one another is through uh, a, a term called tribal psychology. Okay? And tribal psychology is all about this idea that we're all 
congregate. We all connect ourselves through tribes. So here's, here's a definition of a tribe. A tribe is a group of people who feel connected in a meaningful way but they, because they share something in common. Okay, so this could literally be anything. Okay, it could be anything that you share in common. You feel a connection. It's funny. You could go all around the world, and it could be the smallest thing. It could be the clothes that someone's wearing, their accent, the language they speak. It could be all of these different things. It could be, you know, uh, a class, maybe a school class, or if you grew up in a class system, it could actually be that as well. It could be faith that connects us. It could be sports. It could be, for me, the Winnipeg Jets. I'm probably the only fan here but I'll just hang on to them. There we go. The, you know, the Winnipeg Jets, it, it could be ethnicity, right, or lifestyle. It could be your age, your demographic. It could be your hobbies. Uh, it could be the language that you speak. So, so all of us together here in this moment, all of you watching online, we have this connection. We're connected around this idea that we, we are here for, in some ways, a similar reason. We believe there's something about God that we need in our lives. He makes us better, so we're here to do that together, to explore that. Uh, but when you break this down, if you go into our lobby after the experience, you'll see all kinds of microcosms of, of this. You'll see people gathered in age groups, right, in demographics. You'll see people gathered in different ethnicities. You'll see people gathered who speak different languages. You'll see, you'll see people gathered who look the same. Their clothes are all ripped. And you're like, why can you just buy normal clothes? I don't know. I'm one of those people. I don't know why we can't. Um, you know, so, so we, we congregate around all of these, these different ideas. And these connections... They make a distinction between us, those that are in the group, and them, those that are outside of the group. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually just how we're wired. And so tribalism is that each tribe has a pattern of attitudes and behaviors that help them determine what is normal. Okay? So, so, so here's what this looks like. It looks like this. For us in this group, we all have all kinds of judgments and kinds of ideas that we believe are normal that are good. And that people outside of this normal, would, we would say those kinds of beliefs are bad. Or, or in, in a group, we would say these beliefs are right, and those that believe not this way are wrong. Or these beliefs are worthy or unworthy outside of this group. Uh, these beliefs are rational, or the things that we think, our arguments are rational. And those that don't think like us are irrational. Our beliefs are true, and those that believe differently are false. Okay, so... That's sort of a little bit of the psychology behind how we think. Now, here's the thing about it. Is tri to, to be in a tribe isn't dangerous. Okay? It's actually healthy. It's the way we were created and the way we're wired to, to connect with one another. What is dangerous is polarization. Okay? Polarization is dangerous. And, and this is what polarization is. It's simply the measure of the magnitude of differences, whether it's real or perceived, between you and me. So even in this moment... Uh, for you, you could have a, a real or a perceived difference that you say even between yourself and myself. You can, you can be like, I identify with that individual based on whatever, the way he speaks, the way he looks, the, the way he engages uh, other people, whatever it is, or not. You could say, I don't like those things, right? Or it could be simple, like I like the red carpet. I don't know who, why you would do that, but maybe you do. I like the red carpet. I don't like the red carpet. I like the music. I don't. I like young people. I wish there were more older people. I don't like that coffee that they're serving. I, you know, and it could be the smallest things, but each of these things are potentially polarizing and, at their worst, are actually dangerous. So here's the problem with polarization. Let me just kind of sort of draw it out for you. This looks like a lot, but let me just kind of walk you through it. As you, as you get into a group, let's say for those of you that are even here at Central, maybe for the first time or you're new, for you coming in, uh, you sort of sit in this spot of, you know, things are, things are good, right? In, in this community, you, you're so far so good. Things are green lighted. You're thinking, you know, I think these are people that I could identify with. If you've been part of this, you know, for some time, maybe for you, you have a lot of common ground. So this would be, this would illustrate our tribe. When you're part of it in the beginning, it seems as though you have a lot of things that are in common with others. It's why you stay. It's why you keep coming here. But over time, what can happen is you can find yourself beginning to polarize a little bit, and you begin to wonder, based on maybe some, you know, a conversation you had, maybe something somebody said, maybe something somebody heard. It doesn't even have to be a real uh, polarization topic. It could just be a perceived one. Central thinks this, and so you begin to wonder, is this the place actually for me? I'm wondering if I still have enough common ground to the point where you find yourself in a tribe eventually, and this is, this is the destructive part of a tribe, 
is you have people that are all the way over here, and you have people all the way over here, and they're looking over at these people thinking, I don't, I don't have anything you know, that I connect with with those people, and I don't believe what they think is right, and you actually get in the danger zone. And so as polarization increases, common ground decreases. And what happens is the tension becomes so much so in, in groups that they split. It's like a cell. It's like a, a cell that splits, and they, and, they, and they go into two. And I think this is the thing, as we talk about this conversation, that's, that's important, is that this is often a polarizing topic. As you talk about these things, there are already things happening in the room that I could immediately polarize this, but I'm going to refuse to do that because I think it's actually, it hurts, it, it grieves the heart of God that, 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 that we split over these things that we can't find common ground to base ourselves in, that we can't be anchored in something that makes us in common ground. I think this is the reason why we have 20 churches on our street, if I'm honest, Right? It's because somebody looked at someone else and said, I don't have any more common ground with you. We're going to go do something else. And I think for us, there's something powerful about saying, okay, well, what is it for us that is common? What is it that we can anchor ourselves on together to realize that we are actually more common than we think? We have more in common than we actually maybe perceive or even know. So what is it? Especially as it relates to sexual identity and gender dysphoria, what is it that we all share in common? And let me give it to you really simply in this statement. We believe this. We are for anyone who's on a genuine and honest journey to becoming who God has created them to be. That's it. So, so if you are anyone who is genuine and honest and honestly on a journey to become who God has created you to be, you're in. You're in. Welcome. That's great. We're, we're glad that you're here. So that means if you're a predator, you're not in. Because you're not on a genuine and honest journey. Okay, I mean, that's, that's kind of extreme. Or if you're trying to exploit someone, not in. But if you're someone who is genuinely and honestly on a journey to becoming who God has created you to be, that is our common ground. That's what we're doing together. And so we believe that. We believe that to our core. And, and, the, and the truth is we've done a lot of damage by reducing belonging to a long list of things. Right? We've reduced belonging to this long list. And the truth is, the truth is, if it's about lists, we're all excluded. But the scandalous gospel, and I, I love this, the scandalous gospel is this, is that even though we're all far from being perfect, even though we're all technically should be excluded, that we are all included if we simply turn ourselves to God. That's, the, that's what we share in common. This idea that if you have a genuine, honest journey that you're on to becoming who God has created you to be, then we are in. And I think this is the stuff that drove Jesus bonkers. I just chose that word. I think, I think this is the stuff that drove him a little bit nutty because, you know, when you see Jesus and he's in the temple and he's flipping tables, it's not because he's an angry tyrant. And it's not because we even reduce it to because they were selling stuff in the temple. We, we sometimes reduce God to these, these petty lists. It was because they were blocking the only way for common people to get to God. God's presence resided in the temple in that time. They were blocking that. And I think that's what grieves the heart of God. Anytime we block people from getting to pursue faith and to pursue God, I think that honestly, genuinely grieves the heart of God. I, I, I just believe that. And so for us, this is why we genuinely believe that you can belong before you believe. And we've said that several different times, but we really believe this, that you can belong here whatever you struggle with, whatever you're going through, whatever you feel like if you're you know, stepping into this place or watching uh, with us online or wherever you are, that whatever you're facing, whatever you're struggling with, that you can belong here and you can work it out before you believe. And you can actually believe as you belong. You can do those things together. They're not just exclusive. So that's what we believe. Who's in? All of us, if we're on a genuine and honest journey to becoming who God has created you to be. So then the question becomes, number two, is how do we pursue truth? Okay, in this community, what does that look like? How do we do this? How do, how do you stop yourself from getting off the rails, right? And, and I, I know all the... You know, I have all of the critics in my mind saying, well, how do you know you're not going to just become all things to all people? And, you know, how do you stop yourself from that? How do we pursue truth? And it's really kind of simple. I want to show you two diagrams, and we've used these before, but they're powerful, and I want to show them to you again. The first one is, 
is called the bounded set. Now, you can't say it on the big screen, but inside of here, there are little people, okay? So just imagine with me, or if you could see the TV. Uh, and, and for us growing up, and if you grew up in church or if you spent any time in church, there was probably, you, you would have experienced something to the tune of this. And what this was, was essentially, uh, if you believed um, these things and you acted the way that this group decided and you adhered to all of this way of, of conducting yourself, you would be in, okay? That's sort of how it worked. And if you didn't, you were out, okay? And, and our focus was heavy on who's in, who's out. That was, that was the focus. It wasn't necessarily all bad. There was a lot of good things that came out of it. But the focus was on are you in or are you out? That was what we focused on. At Central, we've really kind of decided to really position ourselves around a little bit of a different focus. And, and that's the second one. The second one is called a centered set. And the centered set is this idea that any of us at any time can position ourselves either towards Christ or away from him. And you can find yourself in the, you know, if you want to define it as the darkest place in life, the farthest away that, that you could imagine from God. If you want to call it hell on earth, you could call it that. You find yourself in that place. And in this place, you can still position yourself. You can turn your posture. You can acknowledge your need for Jesus. And as you do, you can begin to pursue him, regardless of where you are on this journey of faith. But it also means that you could be doing all the right things. You could be going to church every week if you think that's important. You could be uh, noble in your business uh, ventures. You could be doing all the right things with your family. And yet you could also be walking totally away from God. Right? You could be acknowledging that you don't actually need him. You need yourself. So, so at any point, you can turn. At any point, you can turn away or you can turn towards Christ. So this is what we believe, laser focus, the thing that anchors us when we pursue truth is this idea that Jesus is in the middle of it. He's what anchors us. So we, we focus on this idea that the Jesus way is the way. In fact, it's the way, the truth, and the life. Look at what Jesus says right here. John 14, verse 6 says this. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through me, that you will know this truth and the truth will set you free. So this is what anchors us. And the principle is really simple. It's this. It's that when you pursue Jesus, that you can experience truth and that truth actually sets you free. It sounds really simple, but it's actually profound. The Bible calls this a mystery. That's the mystery of Jesus. It's this this thing that we maybe don't ever totally or will ever totally understand, but this idea that when we pursue Jesus, we actually find truth, and this truth in turn sets us free. That's what anchors us. And so Jesus, he offered a couple pretty bold statements when it comes to especially this topic of sexual identity, um, and, 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 and they're around truth, okay? And I want to just unpack them with you for, for, for just a moment. So Jesus reveals two big ideas. The first one is this, is that Jesus embodied grace and truth, okay? Let me just, let me just take a moment to explore this with you. Let's read it together. He said this. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So the word is Jesus, okay? Jesus in flesh came and he made his dwelling among us. And it says that we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. The challenge for us in this conversation is anytime we polarize these things, we run into, we run into problems, okay? So... This is what it looks like. Grace and truth are powerful together, but they're destructive apart. They're powerful together, they're destructive apart. I had, I had uh, somebody last week, we were engaging online, and somebody wrote, they said, are you a grace-driven church? And all I, could, all I could think was, yeah, we're grace and truth. That's what we are. We're grace and truth. And when you separate them, it's actually destructive. Let me, get, let me illustrate it this way. How many of you know someone who knows all things? Okay, how many of you are sitting next to said person? Don't, you don't have to answer, okay. Uh, right, we all, we all work with those people, we know those people, and you know, we, you know what we admire about them is they have principles, they go after things, they know what they want, they know what they believe, what is true, right? And yet, for, for something inside of us says we, we admire that, but we also think sometimes they use it as an excuse to be belligerent, and to be really belittle us, and we know that if we cross them or question them, you know, then they're, they're probably gonna cast us to the wayside, right? So there's something about that that we're like, I kind of admire it, but it really turns me off, right? 
Then there's the other people that you know in your life uh, that are extremely gracious. They're the people that everybody loves, okay? You have them on your staff that you work with maybe or in your house, and uh, everybody loves them. And yet the challenge with people that are all grace is that they uh, accept us for who we are, but they never help us become who we should be. Right? They, don't, they don't ever challenge us. And we, we sometimes wonder, like, what do you actually think? Do you have an opinion? Like, it'd be awesome if you did. You know, like, and, and, you begin, and it seems like they just kind of flow with the wind. And they, you know, whatever, they, whatever comes their way, they just sort of go with. And so I got thinking about it, and I was thinking this, uh, this truth that, you know, something is probably wrong if everybody hates you. And there's probably something equally wrong if everybody loves you. Okay? Right? Isn't that true? Something probably wrong if everybody hates you and equally wrong if everybody loves you. And so even as we talk about this today, there's probably a good chance some of you will be encouraged by this and some of you will struggle with this. That's okay. That's, that's actually a good place to be. That's the place of grace and truth. And Jesus was all grace, all truth, all the time. He embodies this. And what's amazing is you look at his example is as he walked with people, as he talked with people, as he journeyed with people, he extends them the measure of grace that they need. And often it seemed like people who would call themselves far from God or whatever that means. They just, they've, they've positioned themselves farther away from him than for whatever reason. That God seems, Jesus seems to extend them more grace and those that would say that they're closer to God, he actually extends them a little more truth. And yet he extends to each of them in their own complexity what they need in that moment. And so it's a good reminder that Jesus, he embodies this, this idea of grace and truth, that we're designed to, to do both. And any time that we don't, it's actually destructive. It's destructive. You need both. If you don't, you actually begin to hurt people. You need both. They're powerful together. Jesus also teaches us to trust the Holy Spirit to reveal truth. Look at what uh, it says here in John 16, verse 13. It says, but when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, that's the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all the truth. He'll guide you into all the truth. So here's the principle for me in this one. If you're on a genuine, honest journey to being who God has made you to be, the Holy Spirit guides you into all truth. So here's what, I, here, here's what I've been thinking about. If God is really who he says he is, I genuinely believe that God will reveal to you the truth that you need to know. Okay, if, if, if God is really as powerful as he says he is, if he knows all, if he's sovereign over all things, he will reveal to you what you know if you genuinely pursue him, especially as it relates to all things LGBTQ included. So here's, here's what's powerful about this is I want to encourage you to actually pursue truth. If you're struggling or you're battling, you're wondering, what do I do with this conversation? I want to encourage you. I'm going to put up this screen. I want you to take a picture of this. This is all the passages. Well, this is... Eight passages. This is not all of them. This is eight passages to start with. As you begin to study this conversation that have to do with LGBT and Q. Okay? So I want you to take a picture of this and I want you to read them. Okay? I'm not going to tell you what to think about them. I want you to read them. And here's how I want you to read them. I want you to read them with this, with this idea to not proof text. Okay? So here's what I mean by that. Anytime somebody says to you, the Bible says so, just take a second to swallow and just take it with a grain of salt because you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say if you really want to, okay? If you're watching a news anchor, you know, you could quite easily cut a piece here or cut a piece there and you can make it say what you want to say. If, you, if it says something somewhere, you can make it say something else somewhere else. So, so don't use that. That's, it's, a, it's a faulty logic. But here's what I want to challenge you to do. As you read this, don't proof text it. And what I mean by that is don't read it going in thinking you know what it says, Okay? Go in with an honest, open posture. This idea that you can read the passage understanding that this is complex. It's not black and white. There are things that as you begin to dig in, you're going to see that there are complexities to this. There is context. Why is this being written? But I want to encourage you to actually do it with an open, open headspace. And I want you to read it with the idea that you may not be right. Okay? I, I love that about, I love that about conversation is that as you begin to actually work it out, you begin to see that, oh, maybe I didn't think, maybe that isn't what I think it is. Maybe it's not saying exactly what I think it says. But what I believe is, the Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. Whether you're struggling, whether you're not struggling, where you're trying to understand what I should think about this, that the Holy Spirit will actually lead you and he'll guide you into truth. So then, as it relates to truth, the question is, how do we treat one another? 
Okay, and this is the, this is the big one. This is how I want to kind of spend the rest of our time as we, as we close together. Um, there's a passage that a lot of people use when you talk about things that you believe, okay? And they'll often throw this one at you. And this is the passage that we w- would see from Jesus. Jesus says this. He says, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the, with the measure that you use it, it will, be, uh, it will be measured to you. Okay, so there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to this passage. This passage, just so you know, has nothing to do with you discerning what is right and wrong. Okay, if that was the case, anytime that Jesus invited somebody to do something different than they were doing, he would have been judging them, right? Because he said, what you're doing is not the best. Stop doing that and do this, right? Leave, leave, that, leave that lifestyle and go this way. Okay, so this is, this is what Jesus did. So this isn't talking about deciding or discerning what is right and wrong. What this has to do with is condemning those that don't think like you do. What this has to do with is actually telling someone that they do not have value and worth to actually process this with you, and so they are no longer worthy to be in your presence, so to speak, right? You need to go here because you're not welcome here anymore. And the problem with this, I call this the polarization effect. The more polarized we become, so just like, you remember that image I showed you of the the cell? The more polarized we, we become, it becomes no longer, I have a different opinion than you, right? Or I have a different opinion than you do. It becomes now, I'm way over here. I'm way over here. And you're what, you know, whatever it is, you're on the extreme. And no longer does your opinion, it's not even your opinion anymore because our common ground is no longer even the same. In fact, we begin to dehumanize. We begin to say that, you know, we begin to slap labels on people. You're, oh, you're, you're Christian. Okay. So we, so we polarize. Oh, you're LGBTQ. You're over here. Oh, oh, actually, you're Muslim. Okay. So that means you're over here. And, oh, you're left. Okay. You're left. You're right. And we slap these labels on. And the, the problem with it is that we begin to dehumanize people. We begin to treat them different. Like we don't even have to respect them, love them, treat them with kindness, treat them with this kind of grace and truth that Jesus did. And I think it's this exclusion that fuels so much of what is broken in the world. It's how we justify doing the terrible things we do in the name of God or not God because we dehumanize one another. And so I think the principle is this. To cut someone off because they've acted wrongfully is wrong because you too have acted wrongfully. Does that sound good? (laughs) To cut someone off because they've acted wrongfully is wrong because you too have acted wrongfully. So, so what unites us is that we've all fallen short and we're all in need of a better way. That's, isn't that the truth? Every one of us, we've fallen short of what we should be. Every one of us in the room, the, the, we can put the best face on we want, we've fallen short of what we should be, and yet God invites us to be his kids, to be his children, to become all that he's created us to be. And that's the, that's the amazing truth. Look, look how Jesus responds to people who don't adhere to his way. I want to close with a couple thoughts here. Jesus, I love this. It says that he invited children to participate. For those that were, they were outcasted, Jesus invites them in to participate. He says the kingdom of God is actually for you. Jesus talked to a sinful woman. This is what the Bible says. Someone who didn't fit the religious mold. He talks to her. She washes his feet and she anoints him with oil. It's this beautiful exchange. Jesus eats with a tax collector. Just so you know, to eat a meal with someone in, in the ancient Near East was was more than just a meal. It was saying, you're in. You belong with me. I'm inviting you into my life. Jesus, he touched a, a bleeding woman, a woman who was struggling with her health, and he, and he heals her in this beautiful exchange. Jesus spoke to a possessed man, an outcast that no one could t- would talk to anymore. He would break out of chains, and he was this person that was outcast, and Jesus speaks to him. Jesus drank with a Samaritan woman in the midday who, who, who was living in a lifestyle that wasn't, you know, kosher with the, with the Jewish way. This is, this is all of the things Jesus did. And I was looking at them. What are all the things that he did? He, he invited, he talked, he ate, he touched, he spoke, he drank. All of these things indicate movement. All of these things indicate taking a step. All of these things are a little bit like leaning in. And I love that because for me, the principle is this. When someone doesn't act or think like you, lean in. It's what Jesus did. If you don't know what to do, 
and you're struggling with how to approach a conversation or something that's happening in your family or, or, you, or you're confused and you feel like you're in chaos and confusion, when someone doesn't act or think like you, lean in. Just lean in. It's what Jesus did. For us um, and our family, I'll just give you a quick story and then I'll close with one thought. Um, this last year, we had a, a friend of ours who uh, was struggling, um, is struggling with just this whole conversation. And there's someone who lives an alternative lifestyle and, and they would grow up in, they would have grown up in the church and perceived or not, they perceived it as a place where they couldn't, um, they couldn't, you know, work out their, their stuff. They couldn't work out their things that they were processing, their identity. And as a result, they left the church and over a series of years, they found themselves on the extreme left in the LGBTQ community. And they found themselves in the exact same extreme of they had to have their hair a certain way. They had to believe certain things about pro-life. They had to go to certain meetings and gatherings. And if they didn't, they were out. And so this individual found themselves in the middle of both of these full extremes, uh, feeling like they didn't belong anywhere. And so um, Mel and I, we just, not because we're great, we just felt like we had to invite this person. We invited them into our home for a week. And we just leaned in, and we just loved them, and we spoke the, the beautiful things that we saw that God had put in this individual, and we just began to call out those things, and that person began to dream again, that person began a process of some healing, and over this, this past year, six months later, I had a conversation, and, and that person said to me, they said, um, Justin, I'm in the parking lot again when it comes to faith. And what's cool about it was it's not a neat and tidy bowed story. It's just this idea that sometimes we just need to lean in. Sometimes we just need to lean in because people really matter to God. And I had a conversation after our first experience, and I was reminded that Jesus actually cares about you, and he cares about the people that you care about more than you do. He does. He cares about you more than you do. He cares about others more than you do. And so to that person, I just, we just loved them, and we said, you belong here. We don't know what this looks like, but I know that you have incredible value, and that there's something about walking together into this journey of faith that is powerful, and we're going to figure it out together. And I think that's what we're called to. I think we're called to not decide who's in and who's out, but to actually pursue and be anchored in Jesus together, and as we walk hand in hand together, that there's something beautiful that happens. There's something powerful that happens. I think it's the Jesus way. And I think Jesus is big enough and powerful enough that he reveals the truth that we need to know about the way that we're living our lives. And he actually is the one that leads us to freedom. I genuinely believe that. He's that big of a God. He's that good of a God. He leads us into freedom. And my job is to walk with others there. And so I want to ask you really kind of three questions as, as you go. And I want to encourage you to just ponder these. And the first one is, am I embodying grace and truth? Those things are together. They're not exclusive. Are you embodying those things? Do you lean one way or the other? Are you a truth person at the expense of relationship? And as, as a result, you're alone. You find yourself alone a lot. Or are you a lot of grace but not truth? That's a great question. Do you need to grow in that? Am I embodying those? Second one is, am I pursuing truth as it's revealed through the person of Jesus? And this is what anchors us in this conversation, that no matter the convictions that you come to as you study those passages, that we're anchored in this reality that truth comes through Jesus. He's the personified word in flesh, that when he came, that this is how we view it, through the lens of Jesus reveals truth and truth reveals freedom. So are you pursuing truth as it's revealed through the person of Jesus? And the last question is this, am I leaning in? Am I leaning in? When, when was the last time you leaned into someone that you didn't understand? You didn't just write them off with a blanket statement. When was the last time that you did that? When was the last time you, you said, I want to hear you. I want to actually walk with you. I want to I I pursue faith with you. And I don't know what it's going to look like. And we may disagree on some things, but we're going to pursue Jesus together. Am I leaning into those who don't live or think like I do? And I think if you can live in those three frameworks, there's a lot. There's a, there's a long way to go in this conversation. There's a, there's a lot of room to kind of explore faith together. There's something beautiful that happens, I think, when we live in these frameworks. And so for you today, 
Are you living in grace and truth? Do you know the person of Jesus? And are you leaning into those who maybe don't even think like you do? Let's pray together. God, I, I thank you today for just such a beautiful reminder of, of how you approached us. That you came, God, full of love to remind us of your grace and truth and to call us to the best way of living. And God, I thank you for anyone who's here, God, who is, is, is maybe even watching online, who's on a genuine, honest journey to explore faith. And God, for anyone who's even struggling today, today, I, I want to just take a moment to acknowledge them. God, anyone who feels like they're alone and they don't know how to process these things. Anyone who feels like they're frustrated or they feel like they've been typecasted or outcasted. God, I pray that you would remind them today that you see them. God, that we would be people that also see others that don't see like we do. God, I pray that you would also remind us that, that you came to call us to something great, to something better. And that when we lean into you, that there is some truth to be had. There's some freedom to be found. God, would we be people that we embody that. And for anyone who doesn't feel that today, I pray that you would allow them to experience your powerful freedom that comes in embracing a life with you, turning to you, being anchored in you. And God, I also thank you that you leaned into us first. I thank you that sometimes we forget that. Actually, I apologize that sometimes we forget that, that you leaned into us first when we were sinners, that we were far from you. The Bible says that you, that you actually came for us. Your word says that you came to us. So, God, would, you, would we be people that embody that to others? Would we lean into them? Would we allow them to experience, God, the powerful, life-changing love and truth and grace that comes only from you? God, I, I just pray for us as a community that you would unite us around the things that we have in common, which is pursuing faith in you. Would you allow us to be people, God, who embrace those that are different or think different than we, realizing that we're all human? that we're all in need of a Savior, and that when we pursue you, God, that's where life is found. And we pray it, God, in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I wanna, hey, I want to just... Thank you. I just want to bless you today with just three simple truths. Number one is that God loves you. No matter your struggle, he loves you. He sees you. He sees you. And... That my hope for you today, my prayer for you, my blessing for you is that as you pursue Jesus, that you'd be anchored in him, you'd find truth in him. If you feel chaos and you feel confusion, may you know Jesus and may his truth set you free. And may you be someone who's an agent of reconciliation, that as you leave this place, would you lean into those that don't think like you do, who disagree with you. May you be someone who embodies the very thing Jesus did for you. May you lean in, be someone who embraces that truth today. So I bless you with that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amazing. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.